All right, the tropics in the western Pacific are heating up. We now have Invest 96. W. Remember these invest areas are denoted by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. Uh, basically, uh, to put it simple, it, it's them saying, okay, this is an interesting area. We're going to watch it closer and they, you can put tropical floaters over it. More model data is ingested into it and we kind of get a closer idea. At this time, though, really uh, the key thing is it's a, it's a tropical wave uh, located right over Palau. Just out in here, you actually see kind of a little bit of circulation uh, and uh, already actually on ASCAD imagery, that circulation uh, is being picked up. But plenty of convection with this too from Palau over towards Yap as well. Plenty of thunderstorms, and that's really going to be the, the key thing with this. As it tracks towards the west, northwest, definitely going to be increasing rainfall across the Philippines as well, especially in the Luzon. I know you need the rain. It's been so dry lately. This is that ASCAD imagery I was talking about that. Look at this. Uh, almost, eh, you know, it's kind of an elongated trough out here. Uh, trying to, I wouldn't say it's quite tropical depression or a low level center just yet, but definitely an elongated trough there at this time, which uh, is indicating that this is starting to organize just a, a bit. Uh, look at some of these wind reports, though, uh, based on ASCAT imagery, 15 to 20 knots, so not even quite the tropical storm strength yet, but, you know, we, we could have a tropical depression on our hand in the very near future. By Saturday evening, actually, the GFS model does show a little bit of a tropical depression towards the east of Visayas. Going ahead in the Sunday evening, still out there. Actually, the GFS pulls this just north of Luzon and pulls in the monsoon of moisture behind it while the ECMWF cruises closer into Luzon. This is still organizing, and it's still very scrambled eggs right now um, so it's kind of hard to indicate where exactly this would go and that's why I really keep on stressing the, the big point is that I mean look at the atmospheric moisture that is going to track west with this system and increase rainfall so we could see some localized flooding but I think the big deal is if this does move into Luzon it's actually gonna be um, helping that area out more than hurting it because it's been so dry lately so um, yeah that's our Invest 96W increase in showers, of course, with that, uh, uh, not only for Luzon, but also down here, northern Luzon, but also central and southern Luzon, maybe into Visayas as well. Uh, you can see across the Cagayan Valley, 20, 50 millimeters over the next five days. But this could drastically change if this whole weather system pulls a little bit further towards the north, though. All right, so you like my SpaghettiOs, and my SpaghettiOs, the latest output still showing, yeah, pretty decent chance of some sort of development out here. It's not super centered just yet, but there's a lot of these green circles with the ensemble, which means that, you know, the model is saying, yeah, yeah something's going to pop up here. You know, so that goes with climate data this time of year and yeah, not uncommon out across that region. So, of course, you know, at this point, you want to start making those preparations. We could go into a signal force one, uh, which would mean winds of 30 to 60 kilometers per hour. Of course, continue to track in with Bagasa for that. You know, somebody actually said in the comment section of my video the other day, they said, Robert, you don't like Bagasa, do you? Or why is he always taking jabs at Bagasa? I am not. I think that uh, they've been doing a fantastic job lately. I, I don't know who got that impression. Um, I actually have a lot of friends at Pegasa. Uh, I think they've doing, been doing a great job. I have said in the past, 10, 15 years ago, not the case. I'll admit it. They were, they were a questionable agency. There was a lack of funding. Uh, and there were some older people who just didn't want to change. But now it's totally a different situation there. And I think they've just been doing a fantastic job. So I don't know who, I think it was just somebody who just saw, you know, a white person on here and was thinking, okay, he doesn't like Pagasa or something. So nah, no, those guys are, they've been doing a great job lately. So big shout out to them. Always checking with them for those official forecasts. Uh, I just try to relay what they're saying in some situations. Uh, look at this graphic. Got this in the works. Uh, all these graphics are in the works. Uh, with our new package that we're putting together uh, with a lot of your help from Patreon. So thank you very much for everybody who's been helping on Patreon. I'll put a link down below. I say it in every video, and uh, lately not a lot of new people have been signing up. You know, we still got we got about 50 people signed up right now. Oh, I love you guys. You're, you're all my heroes. Thank you so much. If you guys want to help out, though, the getting those graphics is going to be a big help. And one of the cool things about those graphics is that they do ingest Pegasa data. 
So, like, it's one of the only TV-level graphics in the world that ingests Pegasa data, so I won't be showing JWC tracks in tropical systems. I'll have Pegasa ones for the Philippines, which is cool. Uh, not only cool, it's useful. How about that? This is me geeking out a little bit. Like, yeah, that's cool. Um, I'll stop rambling. Going to keep you guys posted on this uh, area over the next few days. Stay safe out there.